Okay, so here is how we would write this. How, this is how you would have written it last week, roughly speaking. Uh, a shape is one of uh, make my circle, uh, number, 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 color string, uh, make my square, number, number, color string, and make my, or make my composite shape, shape. Okay, and here I have defined struct my circle, uh, x, y, r, color, uh, my square, x, y, l, color, and my composite uh, front, back. And here, because I am in uh, Lang Racket rather than in the student languages, uh, I'm going to specify that this is transparent so that uh, you'll be able to see what these things look like when you print them out. The transparent is default in the student languages, but not in Racket. And of course, here I have interpretations. All right, X, Y is the position of the center of shape in pixels. Y, y is the, R is the radius of the circle. L is the length of the side of the square. C is the color, expresses a color string. And in my composite, front is the shape in front, back is the shape in back. All right, that'll make a difference when we go to doing add to scene. So we have our template. What's a template for a shape fun? Um, cond, if S is a my circle, then it's some combination of my circle X of S, my circle Y of S, blah, blah, blah. Right, if it's a my square huh, of S, then it's some functional combination of the pieces. And if it's my, my composite, well, it's going to be some functional combination. But of course, there's a recursive call here. So it's the result. It's a some function combination of the result of calling the shape function on the front of the shape and on the back of the shape. So here's weight, which is shape to number. Um, I'm going to assume that every shape weighs uh, one gram per pixel of area. We'll see later on why we call it, well, we'll see, actually see in a minute why we call it weight instead of area. So if it is uh, a circle, it is pi r squared. If it is a square, it is the square of the length. And if it is composite, then it's the sum of the weights of the front and the back. Right, the, again, this is stuff you could have written in week three. This is why I called it uh, weight instead of area, because now I don't have to worry about overlaps. Add to scene, uh, well, let's see. I've done this s slightly fancy. Um, so if what I have is a circle, I'll say, eh, let's define the image based on the radius and the color of the circle. And now I will place that image at the x and y coordinates of the scene. So except for the local, which is, a, which is a little bit of a fanciness, is, again, all code that, at this point, you really should be able to write in your sleep. Similarly for my square. And now for my composite, what are we going to do? Well, let's see. I want the image on uh, front, the front image, to be on top of the back image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scene, I'm going to paint the back image on it, and then I am going to uh, paint the front image on that. Now, just for fun, just for fun, I'm going to show you another variant of this in which I have spread out, I have split out each of those bits of code that I had here into separate functions just so we'll, we'll be able to manipulate them. Here, my circle of s is going to be my circle weight of s. If it's a square, it's going to be my circle weight of s. My, excuse me, my square weight of s. If it's going to be my composite, it's going to be my composite weight of s. And similarly for add to scene. Okay, we're going to have my circle add to scene, my square add to scene, my composite add to scene. <laughs>